Hello everybody, welcome to another video from EGIS Associates. Today we're going to do something a little different. Instead of talking about software, we're going to delve into some areas of professional development and talk about GIS certification. What is it and why you might want to get it. So before we get going too far, I want to talk about some terminology because people seem to get confused on the difference between a certification versus a license versus a certificate. So a certification is something you voluntarily choose to get. It is evaluation of your skills and knowledge, and it's really designed to recognize some level of expertise, either within the profession or with a specific technology, but it is completely voluntary. It's not a legal requirement in most cases. And it's typically set up by a group of peers or a vendor um, or those kind of things. It's not a governmental function. Whereas licensure is a governmental function. It's something that the government creates and codifies in the laws that says, this is what it takes to get the license. This is who must have the license. This is what is required to practice under that license. And this is how you maintain the license or could lose the license. This is designed to protect the public. And typically this is for things like, you know, doctors and lawyers, uh, but also gets into engineering and surveying and even uh, your hairstylist and, and people that do nails and so on are required to have a license in order to practice in that profession. A certificate on the other hand, is just some award you get saying you've completed some course of study. And that could be a degree from a university for completing a four-year bachelor's program or a master's program or a PhD program. Uh, or it could be you attended a one-hour webinar and you got a certificate for attending the webinar saying that you were there and participated. It could be going to a conference and participating in a workshop at the conference. All of those are very different things. I can be certified, but not licensed. I can be licensed, but not certified. I can have a certificate or a degree from an educational institution, but not be certified or licensed yet. So all of these work together, but there are very different things. And you need to make sure you understand that just because you went to college and got a degree doesn't automatically mean you're certified or you're licensed. And somebody may have a certification but not have completed a degree uh, or have a license. So just always keep that in the back of your mind when you're looking towards your future. Again, you just want to make sure you understand the differences between those, those three things because they are, as I said, very different. Now, getting back to certification. Right? There are several different types of certification. We can get a vendor-based certification, sometimes called a technical certification. Uh, this is going to be based on some sort of software and come from people like Esri or Microsoft, Autodesk, or um, even from something open source like potentially QGIS. Then we have professional-based certification, like the GISP from GISCI or ASPRS, the American Society of Photogrammetry and Remote Sensing. They have a series of professional certifications for photogrammetrists and even some GIS certifications and, and so on. Uh, IWO, the International Association of Assessing Officials, has a tax mapping certification uh, as well as others they, for appraisers and things of that nature. But all of these are professional-based certifications, meaning they're not focused on a single technology. When you look at vendor or technical based certification, right, these are going to be focused on a specific technology platform. So from Azure, it would be ArcGIS. Microsoft, it could be Windows, Server, SQL Server, or Office, or any of their other products. Autodesk, it would be AutoCAD, uh, Civil 3D, Revit, uh, Softdesk, uh, those kind of things. But again, it's focused on that platform. And what it shows is that you know how to use that specific platform 
at the level you are certified at. So it doesn't necessarily mean you understand the concepts behind how to use the software. You just know that you click this button to do this thing. And that the vendor says this is the best workflow to perform this type of task, right? Typically, there's no minimum requirement. You don't have to have used the software for a specific time frame or worked in the industry for a specific time frame. You can simply go apply to take the exam, sit, take the exam, and if you pass, you're certified. Uh, this does mean, I guess, technically, you, you could get very lucky and pass that exam uh, without any knowledge or skill and get really lucky and then be certified, that, that's highly unlikely. As somebody who has taken more certification exams than I ever care to remember, I, I can tell you the chance of somebody just passing one of these uh, on sheer luck is pretty astronomical. These exams are not easy. I, I've taken the ESRI certification exams. I've taken some CompTIA certification exams, Microsoft certification exams, and they are, they're very difficult. They, you really do have to, to know the ins and outs of the applications you're testing on really thoroughly. So yeah, these, these are not easy by any stretch of the imagination. The other type of certification we have is professional-based certification. So this is gonna be the ones like I was talking about coming from GIS, CI, AS, PRS, IAAO. These are different because they don't focus on a specific platform. They, they are software agnostic. What they really are testing you on or, or showing capability in is the theory. You understand the basic knowledge. So it doesn't matter which software you use, but you understand what a projection is and how they work. Uh, that you understand what you know overlay analysis is or image classification those kind of things. It's gonna be that basic knowledge. Now included with this is not just an exam to test your knowledge, but also a minimum time in the field, right? You have to have worked in that profession for typically about four years at least. That, that's pretty common is that you have to have four years in the field before you can even qualify for the certification. Also included with a professional certification is a code of ethics and rules of behavior. These are guidelines that kind of dictate what you can and cannot do as a certified professional. So for example, in the, the realm of GIS, if you're working in a municipality and one of the elected officials comes in and asks you to start changing the voting district boundaries, uh, just arbitrarily comes in and says, hey, could you could you please put this subdivision that's over here into my district? You know, I have some good friends up there and I really like them in my district. They'd like to be in my district. So can you just move that line over, right? Well, you know, that elected official would technically be your, your boss, right? Higher up chain of command as it were. But the code of ethics and rules of behavior would indicate that you just can't do that. That would be unprofessional activity. And you would have to tell the selected official that you can't just arbitrarily move the line, that in order to make such adjustments, you'd have to go through a whole process as defined, um, as defined by the Department of Justice. So that's another part of being or having a professional certification is that you are guided by these ethics and rules of behavior so that you may find yourself in a position where you have to tell your boss no. Now, that doesn't mean you just have to be belligerent about it, but you need to explain to them that you can't do that and, and why. And if they push the issue, you know, it may come down to a point where you lose your job uh, because you won't just do what they tell you. But again, that's part of being a professional, right? The other nice thing about a professional certification is it does typically include a continuing education requirement so that you have to continue to learn. And really what having this does is it shows that you do have a high level of knowledge, not just in which buttons to mash, but you really understand what happens when you use the various tools. And you also have a certain level of experience in the field that demonstrate your capabilities. It also establishes you as a leader within your field, right? That you are a dedicated professional that wants to better yourself and your community with the use of these technologies. So 
why do you want to pursue certification? Or, or better yet, let's start with why does the industry need certification? Well, one, it's to advance GIS as a true profession. As GIS professionals, we work often with many other professions. We work with planners, engineers, surveyors, doctors, lawyers, uh, administrators, you name it. We work with a bunch of other professionals. And in order to cement our place within that hierarchy, we need to be recognized as professionals. And certification is one of the pillars of defining a profession. So that's part of the reason that we have been working as a community and industry to establish certification within GIS. It also helps support the needs of our employers and in, in their business, right? I would average a guess and say that most, well, maybe not most, but a lot of GIS professionals and users are hired by non-GIS savvy people, be it from HR, or other professions, or, or what have you. Well, having certification is one of the tools that they can use to verify the claims of the potential applicants they're looking to hire because they've already been vetted by their peers or by an exam or something uh, that is not within the employer's ability to do. So it really helps them uh, establish a criteria on the, the skills and knowledge in being able to prove that the people they're reviewing have that capability. It also sets a bar on evaluating their staff, right? If somebody is working for them and they go and achieve one of these certifications, then that establishes a certain knowledge level, a certain bar in which they can be judged and look at for you know, future advancement or raises or things of that nature. Uh, and of course, by having those certifications, if you're say working in the private sector, they can use that in their proposals, their responses uh, to get new business, to show they have credentials, knowledge, skill sets, and have proof that they do, right? So it helps in that regard. It also, when working with these other professions, establishes a core level of competency with education, experience, professional contributions, and ethics so that people know what they're going to get, right? So it ensures a level of quality for the products we produce because we, we are showing they're being produced by capable individuals that are, have proven themselves to have a certain level of knowledge and abilities and that they're not going to just do something because they're told to do something, those kind of things. So it, it sets a level of trust with the products and services that we deliver within our industry. But why would you personally want to go get a certification? Right. Well, first, it helps others recognize you as somebody that knows what you're doing. Right. You have the certification. So people know that you know how to run ArcGIS desktop or that as a GISP, you have a certain uh, knowledge level about, you know, projections, data management, data design, uh, analysis and, and so on. Right. So people within the GIS profession and other professionals out there we work with will be able to identify that credential and know that you know what you're talking about, right? And we also see that having a certification is increasingly requested in new job announcements, in RFPs or requests for proposals coming up for new projects um, and, and those kind of things. The GISCI, the, the folks that run the GISP certification, in 2014, they identified over 100 jobs where GISP was listed as a preferred credential, and that number seems to keep growing. Uh, and I can back that up with the annual GIS certification survey that I've been doing since 2013. I believe that's as far back as it goes, uh, where, it, where that is indeed being indicated that GISP or other certifications are increasingly be li being listed as a preferred credential. So if you are out there in the job market looking to, to get a new job or maybe get a change or maybe even get promoted, it, it certainly would indicate that having a certification would be beneficial in that goal in your, you know, your professional development. Also, having a certification has shown to have greater earning potential. 
So the recently released ERISA GIS salary survey that was based on numbers from 2017 showed that the average salary for somebody with the GISP was $10,000 higher than those without it. And that confirms their previous salary survey uh, from several years ago that showed the same indication that having that GISP certification gave you a greater possibility of earning more money. And I don't know about y'all, but I, I like earning more money. It makes my wife happy. It allows me to buy fun toys, go on vacations, keep a roof over my head and those kind of things. So, you know, if, if for no other reason, there you go. Getting more money is always a good thing. But probably to me, one of the, the best things about having or requiring a professional certification or technical certification in a job is it promotes your own professional development. In order to maintain those certifications, you have to go learn. And in a field where things are changing so fast and so dramatically with new technologies, new software versions, new uses, uh, new interactions with other professions, new legal requirements, and the list just goes on, we have to stay on top of all that. Or we're going to be left behind in, if we do find ourselves looking for a new job or trying to get a new promotion or whatnot. If we're not keeping up, we're not going to get those new jobs. We're not going to get the higher salaries. We're not going to get the promotions. So by having certification, and especially if we can get it written into our job descriptions, is going to force that issue. We're going to be able to request money to go to training, to go to conferences, to participate in professional organizations like ERISA or GITA or ASPRS or, or whatnot. So that the first thing that doesn't get cut out of all of our budgets when things get tight is training. And then right now, that's what happens when times get tough. For GIS folks, uh, budgets are slashed. Training is the first thing to come out because it's not a requirement to have it. Right. But you look at every other position out there, you know, uh, planners, surveyors, appraisers, the, the fire department, police departments. 911 operators, even water plant operators, wastewater plant operators, all of those require continuing education because they have these certifications that they must maintain, right? So another great reason to, to want to have a certification. Well, I, I hope you found this informative, that it gives you a better understanding of certification and why you'd want to get it, as well as some basic terminology. If you do have any questions or need help, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, don't forget, if you need help with your GIS, we can certainly help you with that. But again, if you have questions, feel free to uh, contact us via our website, which is www.egisassociates.com. Give us a call at 678-710-9710 or shoot us an email at info at egisassociates.com. So that's about it. I uh, hope Again, you found this video informative. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you want to be notified when we post new videos, make sure you subscribe to our channel. Uh, we really hope to be adding a lot more content in the future and expanding the content. We're looking at doing some hardware reviews and, and trying to include some topics on IT issues. With all the new software coming out, it's, you know, a lot of folks are getting having to pick and buy new computers with new capabilities, so we want to make sure you understand some of that stuff and whatnot. Um, anyway, hope you all have a good one, and we'll see you next time.